Hello, my name is Mage, and welcome to Black and White Thinking. Today, I am finally back on my Harley and Ivy bullshit, thank the goddess. I love talking about Harley and Ivy, and even more so, I like talking about Harley and Ivy to you guys. In this video, we have some pretty cool buy shit to discuss. For those that don't know, and I'm gonna assume most of you do, DC Comics recently early released the first issue of its Harley Quinn show companion comic set between Season 2 and the coming Season 3. I don't know why you'd be watching this if you haven't seen the show, but again, if you haven't seen the show, go watch it. The comic is written by T. Franklin, the art is by Max Sarin, and it is called Eat, Bang, Kill. It's perfect. I will link below where you can order and pre-order it. T. Franklin has recently been taking shit on Twitter for being not biphobic, so make sure you give her all the love you can. This review, if you can call it that, it's going to be full of spoilers for the comic and the show, so if you've not read the first issue of Eat, Bang, Kill, then full warning, I am going to ruin it. Otherwise, strap in and strap on for some more dramatic feels about my favourite fictional bisexual couple, because I will never stop being a 12 year old shipper at heart. Let's do this. So off the top, yes, I really enjoyed the comic. It's not the show, but it's damn close, and this does feel like show vs Harley and Ivy. I love that it is being written by a queer woman. This is a big step, I appreciate it. The entire concept of this comic is Harley and Ivy going on a road trip to get over their shit. It's pretty bog standard for what people want, and I'm happy about that. It's honestly not even that far off a post season 2 fic I wrote myself because I'm awful. But honeymoon period Harley and Ivy, pun intended, is what is needed right now. The road trip is this important space that they both need. Another thing from the first page, I really enjoy the backwards manga spin on the art style. These kind of exaggerated expressions remind the audience that this was a cartoon first, comic second. I love the little heart eyes and Harley's creepy smile and Ivy's sex face. Big fan of the art, it's very cute. And as I said, the characterization is good. There are a few things I want to talk about, but I don't think it's really relevant. Being that this is the first issue, I want to wait an issue or two before I bring them up. But mostly, like I said, it's good. What we have so far, I like. I'm definitely interested in how Ivy is being portrayed here, and mostly in season three. They're doing a good job. It was really nice to see Ivy admit that she was pretending to be happy with Kite Man. I'm really bored of having to explain this to people. But Ivy actually loved Kite Man. Please, like, show me where she was miserable. Sleeping with someone, liking someone, dating someone is not the same as being in love with them. Those are all different things. I need to see Ivy forgive herself for everything that's happened and be happy, but I'm going to come back to this point as I move through the issue. Like I said, the first page is just great. We open on the Harley Quinn highway and we see Ivy worshipping the goddess. We also see Gordon being set up as the main antagonist of the series, which, good. It's nice to see a story about Harley and Ivy that has a villain other than the Joker. Also, fuck cops. Plus, it's a nice setup to include Barbara in later episodes. I also really like the appearance of Harleen. I missed her and she gives Harley some pretty solid advice when she tells her to use kid gloves with Ivy's emotions. Yeah, I just want to kind of cradle Ivy this entire issue. She deserves this holiday. And for men on the internet to stop talking shit about her. Harley's bedroom at the mall. Let's talk about it. It's the highlight of the comic, maybe. There's a lot to analyse here, and um, mostly just a lot to like. There are lots of really cool references, and then a bunch of stuff that I'm just curious about plot-wise. There are the obvious ones, the references to the Harleys that have come before, and specifically the Harleys that have inspired this one. Rebirth Harley, Classic Harley, and Live Action Harley. There is Harley's bat from Suicide Squad and her costume from Birds of Prey. Her skates, Bernie the Beaver, and a bunch of other comic references. Then there are some nice references brought straight out of the show. The Cobb Squad and Harley's gang, with Psycho ripped out. This makes me feel things. Both Harley and Ivy are desperate for friends and human connections, and that is honestly one of the reasons their relationship is so great and important, and I love it. 
this room also represents to me how important this version of Harley is. Like, I'm sad enough to have a specific version of Harley of how I'd want to see her portrayed, and this show gets pretty close. This Harley feels like an accumulation of the other Harleys, the great unifier, a pinnacle of what hundreds of writers have contributed over almost three decades. Then there is, um, The Shrine, which, lord above, Harley is so fucking creepy, and it's important to me. Like, this is more than a shrine, it looks like an altar where she is doing some weird love spells or something. My baby is borderline. This looks like my bedroom wall at 12, except it wasn't pictures of Poison Ivy, it was pictures of Ashley Tisdale. Another thing about Harley's room, whilst we're discussing mental health, there are loads of pill bottles just, like, scattered around. Not sure what to say about that, but felt like I should point it out regardless. Hashtag relatable. We see Tawny call Harley and Ivy's relationship an affair, which again, yeah, sure, okay, if you say so, society. And once again, Harley's creepiness shines through when we see that she has been sleeping with a picture of her and Ivy. Also, a reference to smashing TVs. Great, I made a stupid video about that, you can go watch it. As we move through the comic, it swings back to Ivy's emotional turmoil, and honestly, I hate seeing her like this. Ivy's story is so relatable, so inherently queer and bisexual, and she represents a lot of the feelings women who date both men and women have to deal with in their lives. It also leans into her terrible childhood and awful parents. Everyone in this show has awful parents, and someone once in my comments... Sorry for not remembering who you are, by the way once said that I should maybe talk about that one time, and yeah, maybe I should, it's pretty thematic. Ivy's parents are truly terrible though, maybe the worst of all the shitty parents in the show, which really is saying something given that Harley's parents put out a hit on her and when it didn't work tried to murder her themselves. We see that Ivy is haunted, she is upset that people will see the truth and hate her for it. That stems from her relationship with her parents, and specifically the abuse inflicted on her by her father. Skipping ahead in the comic, we see this come up again when Ivy muses over the fact that her father said no one will ever marry her. Harley will. And again, I talk about this briefly in my foreshadowing video, this show is weirdly centred around marriage. I really think its ultimate goal is to have that happen for Harley and Ivy. I'm glad Ivy admitted, again, that she was pretending with Kite Man. I don't mean that to diminish Kite Man, but their relationship was a distraction from the part of herself that she was ashamed of. This really isn't dealt with enough in bi-led stories, and I hope it continues. I'd also love it if someone actually said the word bisexual at some point. T did on Twitter this week, big fan of that, thank you, I appreciate it, but within the show or the actual like canon would be great. However, this is DC, so I'm not holding my breath. Hopefully over the space of this comic, throughout season 3, we can see Ivy open up to her love for Harley and for herself, and accept that someone would in fact marry her in a second, and not expect her to change a single part of herself, or pretend to be someone she's not. And that person just happens to be a mad clown girl. Other than Harley's bedroom, this poisonous kisses frame is so good, I think it's my favourite. It's beautiful, look at Ivy's face. Also, it's just like a nice touch and reference to every Harley and Ivy in every canon. Some things just cross every universe, and again, it's one of the reasons I really like Harley and Ivy. Blanket Harley is also cute as hell. It's a nice way of showing her vulnerability through the panel. The art around this whole sex scene in bed scene is just really good. It's handled really well, and I really like it. Thank you, Max. And honestly, what do I even say about this comic? How do I review it? It's a start, a good one, and I really enjoyed it, and I'm hoping by issue 2 I have something more substantial to say about it. There is really a lot to enjoy in this small little adventure, and I love Harley and Ivy so much, I know I said it, but fuck. I think this comic will come to focus a lot on Ivy's emotional baggage going into season 3, something I think will be fairly important going forward in the story. This is something that anyone who's super into the show will enjoy following, and I'm impressed by how much Harl Ivy content we have actually had this year. You should definitely read this comic if you like the show. But also, we have had a lot of Harley and Ivy content. I'm not judging it as good or bad, because I definitely have my opinions, but we have had multiple different Harley and Ivys across multiple different DC platforms. And while things are going better than they were a few years ago in that regard, this comic kind of represents that. It represents the progress we, and DC I guess, 
have been making in pushing this relationship forward. Watching it grow is an honour and a blessing. Thank you. Two last points though, because obviously I'm not finishing there. <laughs> Why would I? I talk too much. The first point is something I noticed throughout the comics that I wanted to touch on that's like, I don't know, personal to me. There are quite a few references to goddesses in these very few pages. That doesn't surprise me, but Ivy blesses the goddess when they are on the Harley Quinn highway. Then there is the tattoo idea that Harley draws. You can see it in the corner of her bedroom in this frame. It has Ivy as a goddess surrounded by petals, as well as there being a very strangely placed Celtic trinity knot nearby. This may be a scribble, but it's a weird coincidence if it is. This sign to early Christians represented the Holy Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It is close to the Valknut from Norse Germanic cultures. This trinity is an inherently feminine one. And in more pagan traditions, more modern pagan traditions, the trinity knot has come to represent union, love, and to some even, the triple goddess and her origins in Celtic history. I know this because one, I am a Catholic pagan of Irish descent, but two, because I'm actually writing a video at the moment about Ivy's representation as a goddess, as a triple goddess, as the mother goddess of the DC universe. It's really important to her character and often bastardised, but DC has been playing into it a lot more recently in multiple places with multiple Ivies, and it's piqued my interest and I've been doing a look back on the different stages of goddess she has gone through. So yeah, I noticed it. There are more references too. There's also the petals in the bed after Harley and Ivy have sex. This is a clear reference to orgasms, but it's also a reference to Demeter, who left petals wherever she stepped. There is a lot of Demeter in Ivy. And again, I'm making another video about it at the moment, so I'm not going to go on too much. But there is also another Demeter reference in Harley's painting, which I'm pretty sure shows poppies and the group chat agreed. Thanks, guys. This was funny to me because a friend of mine wrote a piece about the show for our server on Discord a few months ago, and a lot of it centred on Ivy and Poppies. And we had a conversation about Demeter, Ivy and Poppies. The imagery is important to her, etc. I then wrote a poem about Poppies and Ivy. Anyway, it was just like a whole thing a few months ago, and it made me laugh. Poppies are Demeter's plants. Ivy doesn't just have a metaphorical relationship with perhaps the most goddess affiliated of all plants, or the most plant affiliated of all goddesses, whichever way you want to see it. She literally is a poppy in her aesthetic, in her colouring. Poppies are important to her story in so many ways, even down to the opium-like effect of Ivy's poison. I just wonder what all these references mean, if anything. Maybe T, like myself, just enjoys the imagery and connection Ivy has with her mythology. Maybe it means something more in line with Ivy's character arc, her powers, or how people, including us and her, will come to see her over the coming chapters of this story. Either way, I'm excited to find out. More Goddess Ivy, please. And the second thing I really wanted to go over as my final thought on this small step in a comic series is that it's queer. Like, so queer. So bisexual, and it's sexy and romantic. And it shows love between two women that is both beautiful and non-evangelical. Harley and Ivy are a mess. Together, they're better. It's my favourite type of relationship, especially when it's queer. And we don't ever see this. The fact that Harley and Ivy are even allowed to be this emotionally and physically intimate with each other is kind of crazy. It feels really special to me. Like, uh, I've been following them as a couple since the Batman animated series. This is as good as it gets, guys. Bombshells was pretty good for this stuff, but it's not the same. And Harley and Ivy, and I've complained about this before, have been specifically censored by DC Comics. DC has actively tried to separate Harley and Ivy throughout the years, and all that has stopped them winning that battle are Harley and Ivy fans and the writers who take the canon more seriously than any CEO ever could. It's just special and rare, and I'm still happy to see it every time. I don't want to over-congratulate it, but it's a good thing that it's happening, probably less of a good thing that I'm shocked by it. More filthy romantic Harley and Ivy is literally all I ask for. T. Franklin and Max Sarin, and I really hope I'm pronouncing those both properly, really did well with this comic and I enjoyed it. And I'm really looking forward to the next. I've pre-ordered. Let's go. 
Also, they released all the variant covers and they're so good. If you can, please consider pre-ordering it. Again, I'll link it below. T was bullied, I said this at the beginning, off Twitter at the beginning of this week for saying that Poison Ivy is bisexual, which she is. People were super racist to her and now she's gone. Let's support her through her work. This was fun. More please. Thanks for listening to these small ramblings and hopefully with the next issue and all coming issues as the story progresses, I'll have more to say that will be more coherent. This was kind of a ramble. Mage out.